0809-087-1434. The other line is, you take it again, 614-577-1464. You can call in and uh, we kickstart the work this morning. This moment is going to be a blessing. My wife Mildred is giving us a prayer as we kickstart into spiritual things now. Shall we say a word of prayer? Uh, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity and we thank you for today. We are grateful to you. We thank you for our listeners. We pray that whatever we do here will be a blessing to someone out there. Guide our speech, bless our tongue. Let us not say anything on our own, but everything that we say will come from you. Whatever we do here will be a blessing to you and to the nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Right. So we want to share a few thoughts on the book I came with on my trip to the U.S. And the book is entitled Prayer Made Simple. Prayer Made Simple. And in this book, I have tried to pick up prayer points from the whole 66 books of the Bible. And uh, in compiling the prayer points, I try to make every book have a scripture inside this book. So from Genesis right to Revelation, you have a copy or a statement of prayer. So any morning you wake up, the book is also written in such a way it's easy to read. It's captioned for 31 days. And so you pick a day which we are in. You pray a prayer that relates to the day. And uh, you get blessed by the days and you look at it next month again, the following month again, you look at it and pray alongside with it. And so prayer made simple. Now, people have defined prayer in many ways. And so in the book, I try to explain that prayer is the communication between mortals and the immortal. Prayer is the communication between the visible and the invisible. And prayer is speaking to spirits. Okay, so let's take time and explain this and get it into um, down into our bloodstream. When we say prayer is speaking into spirits, whether somebody is going to um, pour libation like we in Ghana do, or the person is going to call um, another saint or a spirit, but the moment the person gets involving himself with something which is not tangible, which he cannot touch, something he cannot feel, we call it prayer. So prayer becomes a communication between the visible and the invisible. And so you lift your voice in that kind of language, we often say that um, so if you want to say something to God, then you will speak into the air. So whilst you speak into the air, you are expressing a thing we call prayer. It is you are speaking into a spirit or you are speaking to a spirit. So the place where a spirit and a human being meets, that place they meet, their place or their pivot, that place is called an altar. Okay, that aspect comes in another book I've written on destroying altars. And that is not for this moment. So prayer is talking to a spirit. Okay, so in the, in the definition continuing, I say that in, in prayer, we speak to three things. In prayer, all prayers, no matter what it is, is classified into three areas. Number one, prayer is classified into a situation. You are either praying about a situation, concerning a situation, against a situation, or you are praying against 
Satan. You are praying against Satan. And the third level is to pray to God, the supreme being. So now let's break these three things down. Prayer is either into a situation or against the devil or against or praying to God. So if I'm in prayer, my prayer is into a situation. What is the situation? The situation can be a sickness. Somebody can be in a, a, a health challenge. And so he comes up with prayer in the health challenge. Now, Jesus calls the disciples and asks them and says that. Now, if you speak to a mountain to move, that is a situation. So if you are confronted with a situation, you speak into the situation that let the situation leave or you don't want to experience it again. So in prayer, we deal with situations. I give you an example of a situation. Maybe four of them. Number one is a situation of a man called Hezekiah. Hezekiah in the Bible, according to 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to 6, is a man who was born, he served God, he did a little a lot of things for God. Then one day, Hezekiah has a prophet come to him to say that you have finished your work. And so put your house in order, you are going to die. Then he, he was sick of a sickness and he needed a healing at that time. And so in prayer, when he prayed, God gave him a solution in the prayer. So anytime we are faced with a situation, we can pray. So prayer is, is not all prayers that are to God. It's not all prayers that are against Satan, but prayer can be to a situation. Another example is a case of a young boy called Joshua. Joshua was in, in a battle. Joshua was fighting. Then he saw the sun was going down. Then he too realized that he was almost about to finish. Then Joshua says that, let the situation favor me by letting the sun stand still. So the sun stood still just because he wanted to finish the battle. So in, in prayer, you can speak to a situation. I give you another example. Another example is when Hannah, according to 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah was involved in a particular thing. She had come many times to Shiloh, came again, came again, came again. And Babu said, at this particular time, Hannah said, I need an encounter with God. I need my situation to change. And so she went to God in prayer. Then in the midst of her prayer, God gave her an answer. So prayer could be in a situation. Two more examples and I run out on this one. So another one is called Jabez. It's a popular story we know about Jabez. Second Chronicles chapter 7. She, he was faced with a situation. And in that situation, he, he entered a prayer and said, God, bless me and change my circumstance. So he got dealt with him according to his situation. And so in the introduction of my book, Prayer Made Simple, we are called to the attention that in prayer, you can speak to a situation. Let's talk about the last one because my wife says that I like talking about Old Testament. And doesn't like talking about New Testament. So I'll pick an example from the New Testament. So in Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to 7, it's a case where the apostles were put in prison. And in prison, they prayed in that situation. And Bible says that in verse 5, the church prayed. And when the church prayed, God sent an angel. A light shone in the, in the prison. God sent an angel. And the angel touched the, the servant of God. His chains fell off and he woke up out of the prison and was liberated. Anytime we pray into a situation, number one, God hears the prayer. Number two, he sends an answer or sends somebody to bring us the answer. An angel brings the answer in every prayer. So every prayer carries or carries a messenger or has a messenger that comes with the answer to the prayer. So you can pray and God releases an angel. Zachariah was in prayer. 
And whilst he was doing the prayer, God sent an angel to say that, Zachariah, your time is up. I'm going to give you a miracle a year by this time. And so it's the same way somebody has been praying for a long time. You have been believing God about something for a long time. You have been praying about a situation for a long time. Sometimes you think it is God. Sometimes you think it is the devil. No, there are times, let me make this statement. And it's better to write it down because a short pencil is better than a long memory. And, and, and let me say it like, because you write it down for free. You see, God gave us the head so that we can allow him to rest. There are issues that you can say, but they are, God help me out. But there are issues that has to do personally with you and God or, or you and the situation. So you speak into the situation. You tell this case. Let me use an example of a man of God. The late Archbishop Benson in the Hosa. He comes up in a situation and the witches and wizards says we're going to have a meeting. Then he said that the meeting can come on. Then they came up and said that even if God comes down, this meeting will come on. They said, God doesn't need to come into this matter. I will deal with you myself because I am an ambassador here. And as long as I'm here, I will deal with the situation. What is the situation you are facing this moment? Does it have to do with your papers? Does it have to do with your health? Does it have to do with your relationship? What is the current issue, situation you are bothered with? I speak in the name of Jesus. Let that situation, let that mountain, let it disappear. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I speak to that troubling situation that have risen up, standing in front of you, looks unsurmountable. Amen. It fought your fathers, it fought your relations, and now stands your way. I speak to that mountain. I speak into that situation. Let there be a way out. When, when, when Moses was faced with the Red Sea and he didn't know where to turn to, God made a way. Any difficulty you are faced with, any challenge you are faced with, any obstacle on your way, I speak today to you as an oracle of God. Let the situation have a breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, any tight situation that push you into the corner, you are, you, are, you are restless. You don't know where the next help is coming from. I speak into that situation that in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a way out. In the mighty name of Jesus. In situations we pray. Number two, we pray against the devil. Because the devil or Satan is our arch enemy. We, 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 we are fighting a battle because Bible says that in the book of Corinthians, he says that we walk in the flesh, but we don't fight against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against spirits. Our encounter, so let me use an account proverb. He says, so chahumana se ma ne bi so if you pray to a situation and nothing happens, something holds it. Daniel went into prayer. He had prayed and asked God. And Bible says that the first day Daniel started to pray, God heard it and sent an answer coming. But somebody resisted it. Could it be that that thing you have been praying for, Satan is holding it? Could it be that a power in your family is holding it? Could it be that something you got yourself involved in is holding it? So in prayer, we deal with satanic forces. As for this level of prayer, it is aggressiveness. This level of prayer comes with intensity. When we are dealing with Satan, we understand Bible says that in Matthew chapter 18, verse number 18, Bible calls our attention and says that we should Bind the strong man. We should bind the one that is warring us. So in prayer, we need to arrest the strong man. He doesn't want us to have things on a silver platter. So God calls our attention that in prayer, we deal with the strong man behind it. Somebody is listening to me right now. It's probably, it's likely that you are going through an issue that prevailed 
you can look through your family line and you see it re resurfacing. It is demonically arranged. It is demonically strategized. And so it keeps repeating. It happens to all men. It happens to all women. It happens to people. So it follows line by line. But listen, in prayer, in this one, it is not a situation. It is Satan himself. You need to tell the devil, back out of this. Get out of your hand. Take your hand out of this matter. The third one is the one I love most. It's when we are in prayer. I said, number one, we pray into situations. Number two, we pray against Satan, our arch enemy. And number three, we pray to God, the supreme being. This is where I love. Because, you see, when you mix this up, I want you to read a scripture for me in Hebrews, chapter number four, verse number 16. When you are talking about Praying to God as a supreme being, there are two types of prayer you can pray to God as a supreme being. Two types or two directions. It's either you pray to God as a father or number two, you pray to God as a friend. There are two things. You either deal with God as a father or you deal with God as a friend. Because you can deal with a situation, you can deal with Satan, but when you come to God, there are levels. There are people that can come to God and in their talking to God, you talk to God as a father or you talk to God as a friend. Let's look at this issue that calls out to prayer in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Mm. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace mm -hmm. that we may receive mercy and find grace to him in time of need. Amen. Amen. So God calls our attention that we should come with boldness, with confidence to his throne. So anytime we enter prayer, we must, or we are dealing with God as a father, we come with confidence. If a young boy is talking to the father about something, or a child is relating to the father about an issue, and it has to do with father child relationship there is nobody who says something outside that prevents the father or prevents the parent from giving what the child deserves so if i come to god as my father and i want to ask god as a father to do something for me when i enter into that prayer the devil has no right situations have no right to stop in that case because I am dealing with my father. And when I'm talking to my father, the devil has nothing to do to stop my father from answering my prayer. So in that case, example is the case of the prodigal son. That when he returned, the father said, bring him a cloth, bring him a slippers, bring him a ring, and give him the right to enter the house again as a son. Because he gave him the right and the privilege as a son. So no matter his mistakes, no matter what he did, because he's back home, because he had come home, his case of yesterday was wiped out. Somebody's listening to me today and you feel so deserted. You feel that you have, you have, you have done so much wrong that God cannot forgive you. You've done so much evil that God cannot forgive you. Like the prodigal son's father opened up his hands and received the son back. Jesus Christ has opened up his hand yeah. to receive you back home. Anytime you come back to him as a son that have missed the mark, he will definitely take you back. Because sin is defined in one word. That sin is missing the mark. Transgression is knowing the mistake and still doing it. And iniquity is something between you and God. Oh, that's too fast. <laughs> so I take time to explain. Sin is missing the mark. Transgression is knowing what is wrong and you still did it. Then, so you are walking and say, do not trespass. So it means that I'm giving you the warning, so don't go over it. Then the third one is called iniquity. And so 
um, um, David was praying and David said, forgive me of my sin, wipe away my transgression and cleanse me from my iniquity. So an iniquity is an inward sin. But any time I have a secret sin, any time I have an inward sin, any time I am plagued with an issue, I should understand that when I come to God as a father, mm. he will forgive me. Mm. It doesn't matter how deep you are gone. You have got yourself involved in situations you can't even talk about. Yesterday, I had a very long text message from somebody I don't even know. He said he had taken my, my phone number from his, her parents' phone and she wants to, he wants to confide in me to share a secret. After I read the text message, I, 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 just, I just said, oh God, have mercy on the parent. Oh God, have mercy on such a person. But you see, there are things we can do to hide from man. But you can't do them to hide from God. And so God calls your attention as a child to come to him in prayer. And said that God, I have done my best. Psalm 107. He said when they came to their wit end, they lifted up prayer to God. And when they cried to God, God brought them a balance. In when our strength is gone and our hope is finished. In the book of um, Jonah, chapter 2, verse number 8. He said, for them that ignored God, they missed the protection that used to be theirs. So anytime you are with God, there is a protection over your life. Anytime you are with God, there is a security over your life. God protects you. God keeps you. So he, he shields your life and keeps you from trouble. What are you going through this morning? What is the circumstances or the issues that you are going through at this particular time? Anytime you come back to God, you come to the security or the one that protects and shields your life. You have lost your life because you are looking for help in talisman. You lost your cover because you are looking for help from somebody that has some magical powers. But any time you come back to God like a father, like a one who created you, he definitely gives you shield in life. Let's talk about the next one. That any time we talk to God as a supreme being, we talk to God like a friend. Like a friend. What, what is Pastor Michael talking about? I'm talking about my book on prayer. It is prayer made simple. And breaking it down in a very simple way. So this is just the introduction. So you get satisfied. At the moment you get the book, you get satisfied in getting to know more about what is written down there. So I said, number one, we can pray. And prayer can be into situation against Satan. Then the third one is against us or, or to the supreme being. And so into the supreme being, we pray to him like a father. In a father, you know that, Charlie, I can talk to my father and tell him this is me. He knows me already, and so I must just be down to earth. Let's talk about the next one. You talk to God like a friend. You talk to God like a friend. I read a scripture in the Bible, and let, let's try and read this one. Luke, Luke chapter 11, verse number 5, running to verse number 8. It talks about a friend that came to another friend at night and listened to the story. Then let's pick some few lessons from the Luke chapter 11, verse 5 to verse number 8. Luke chapter 11, right. verse 5 to 8. Mm. And I read, And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. Mm. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, mm. and I have nothing to set before him. Mm. And he will answer from within, do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. Mm -hmm. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is, he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, importunity, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. Wonderful. So we see in this story that a friend goes to another friend. Then he says that, my friend, I came to you tonight, I have a visitor, and I want you to give me five loaves of bread. 
How can somebody just look and say, Bra Chris, you are my friend, so I've come to you, give me five bread. Do, do you know what is in Bra Chris' pocket? Can you tell what is in Elder Toffee's account? That you just go and say, that I want this money. No, you can't tell. But when you are dealing with a friend, eh, a friend, tell him, I know, you know that me, I could have got five loaves of bread, but I don't have some. So you are my friend. I must deal with you as a test. I must tell you as a So in prayer, when you are dealing with God as a friend, you deal with God in the, in the reality of, of affairs. You tell God that this is how it looks like. I want, Charlie, I am tight. I want five loaves of bread. And Bible says that the friend said, mm, I won't give you. He said, if you don't wake up to give me, I'll keep knocking. Mm -hmm. This is where prayer comes. We, we call it importunity. You don't stop. Mm -hmm. You keep knocking. Mm -hmm. You prayed last year. Mm -hmm. It didn't come. The answer didn't come means stop. Mm -hmm. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. Mm -hmm. Keep knocking. Mm -hmm. You prayed last month. You didn't have an answer. It doesn't mean stop. It didn't mean change that prayer. You must keep knocking. Persistence breaks resistance. Persistence breaks resistance. You don't give up. You keep hitting at it. So, Babu says, as a friend, he kept telling him, give me bread. Give me bread. If you don't wake up, I'm going to, I'm going to break your door. I'm still knocking at your door. And Babu said, the friend gets up and said, okay, you are asking for bread. Take your bread. Go so that I can sleep. So, anytime we ask God of something, he gives us. So, we look at the three areas that we can pray into. We can pray into a situation, we can pray to uh, against Satan, and we can pray to the Supreme Being. Now, these levels of prayer, they determine our aggression and they determine our posture. So, if I am dealing against the devil, uh, um, my, my aggression and posture is different. If I am dealing with God as a father, the posture and aggression is different. And if it's a situation that we say, like in Judges chapter 1, verse number 19, Bible says that they had conquered the people in the valley. No, they had conquered the people in the mountain, but when they came to the valley, they couldn't conquer them because the people in the valley were wearing iron chariots. That you are faced with a stubborn case, faced with a stubborn situation. You are dealing with it, it's not going. Your posture must be different. It must not be there. I'm lying down and um, um, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, you know my prayer list is on the door. Look at it. Um, no! This posture, he said, because I've been dealing with this thing for three years. I've been praying about it for five years. And it has been the same. So I must be wild. I must get up against it. I must change my posture. Bible says that Elijah prayed and said, there won't be rain. I'm, the rain is not coming. Three and a half years. I've closed the rain. I've closed heaven. I've put the key in my pocket. I'm gone. Then after some time, he now wants to pray that rain comes. The first day he was talking to shut the rain. He didn't pray that mouth. He just opened his mouth, said something. One, the thing was closed. Now he must turn it. It took him prayer. He must sit on the floor, put his head in, his, in between his thigh. He must be in a labor position. And prayed. They sent somebody to check. The person came back. He said, nothing has happened. He said, go again and check. He said, go again and check. He said, uh, why? Because when the prayer is, is not answered, you don't stop. Yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. Hit till you get an answer. Hit till the door is open. So let's speak and continue. So prayer made simple is when you focus on prayer that is on these three areas. Let me talk about this and look about this one. So in prayer, anytime you open up your mouth, God fills it up. When you open up your mouth, God fills it up. You are an agent that was created by speaking forth and you are given the power to speak forth. He said, Adam. Anything you call this situation or any animal you give their name to, it will be. So what you say is what comes to stay. Oh, I love this statement. What you say is what comes to stay. So declare a thing and it shall be established. The book of Job, chapter 22, verse 28. Declare a thing. Say something. Can I say something in God for my God friends? Beleoda. Beloda, no, we no, 
you have been quiet for long. When the angel came to Daniel, after he had prayed for 21, he said, the first day you opened your mouth, I heard it. So there are times we can pray meditation prayer. Um, Pastor Mike, what are you doing? My prayer is in my head. Pastor Mike, what are you doing? I'm praying in my heart. No, the, the, we have that kind of prayer. But there are some prayers. It's a no below that. Open your mouth. It's a no way. You must speak. You must shout. Have you ever been on the highway and an ambulance is coming and there's the traffic and the red light is on? If there's a traffic and red light is on, an ambulance is coming with a patient in the car. The ambulance defiles the light. Mm. He runs through red light because we must save a person. Mm. So, prayer is like bringing ambulance to heaven. Mm -hmm. So, all of us are in the queue. We are praying uh, John 3, 16 prayers. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and the God, you, you know my heart, the prayers in my heart. We are praying that one. And somebody comes with a rowdy case. Charlie, they will listen to that one. And so prayer changes. Open your mouth because you must change your posture. The Israelites said to God in the wilderness, we have eaten too much food, bread, bread, bread. We want meat and God gave them. So whatever you say into God's ears, that is what God will do. Anytime you open your mouth and say something, at this time, I feel that I will call your attention to the day number 14 of my book and pray with you. But can I touch on a few things about my introduction? So, a close mouth is a close life. A close mouth is a close life. Anytime you close your mouth, you close your own life. So as you are listening to me, you feel like praying. Listen, let me say this. A, a friend of mine said, he's called Dr. Leford. He's with the Assemblies of God Church in Chicago. He said that anything that is too big for your mouth to say is too big for your hand to hold. If your mouth can say it, God bless me with a five-bedroom house. God bless me with an aircraft. God bless me with a scholarship. God bless my children with scholarship. God open a job opportunity for me. If you can't say it with your mouth, your hand can't hold it. I like that kind of word. Open your mouth. As I'm speaking to you right now, start saying something. Speak over yourself. Tell yourself. I remember some time ago when I heard the scripture about Ezekiel 37. I entered my mother's kitchen and I started praying. I started speaking. I said, this kitchen will have a stove. This kitchen will have a cupboard. This kitchen will have this. I started speaking. At that time, I didn't even know some of the things I was saying. But today you enter my mother's kitchen and there is a stove. There is a shelf. It came by somebody opening his mouth is it a car you want to drive is it a change of job is it marriage you want is it child you want what is the situation in which you are open your mouth say something about the situation because if you feel threatened and you say this is too big to say then get to know that it is too big to hold you can't hold it i i pray today that if it, it doesn't matter the size men may say, I'm just coming from Apostle Comier's office. And he's talking about, about uh, uh, 10, 10 uh, uh, hectares of land he has bought. A huge property. And he was talking about it. And, and he said he woke up in the day, in the night. He went there with his sword. He prayed on the land and said he will buy this land. And today his church is on that land. What are you waiting for? What are you believing God for? What are you expecting God to do? You must open your mouth and speak it. So prayer made simple is to speak into your situation, speak against the devil and speak to your father. Make a statement into the situation. The difference between where you are today and where you will be tomorrow is your ability to open your mouth. Is your ability to go up. Let's take some prayer points in my book okay so if you get to my book my book has day one day two day three day four so day 14 today is day 14 and in day 14 i asked my wife to read for us some of the day points of prayer and uh, we're going to take it we are going to read we have about 20 prayer points there we'll read the first two 
then um, I will jump to the last two. Then we are going to pray. So read for me the first two prayer points on day 14. So on day 14, a yeah. prayer made simple. Mm -hmm. The first prayer point is, Oh Lord, grant me sufficient grace to stand firm for you. And that can be found in Daniel 1, 8. So Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, it says that, And Daniel purpose in his heart. Can you find that scripture for me? He said, Daniel purpose in his heart. Oh, I was talking to a, a pastor friend. He's called Prophet Bernard Ewia Piasa. And he said, I have purpose in my heart. I will not work on Sundays. <laughs> so Daniel 1.8. That's right. But Daniel resolved that he will not defile himself ah. with the king's rich food or with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief. Hold on. There are people who are doing things in America. There are people who are getting involved in issues in America. But your prayer today is that God grant me the grace to stand firm. I don't want to be like this, like that, like this. It's because of my position or because of I want a job, because I want him to marry me. I'll let him be pressing me small, small. Uh, um, we are the only we are only neighbors in the house. I am a house. Um, how did, I saw it somewhere written today. Is it what? Uh, roommate. Uh, and so uh, my, his wife, his wife is in Ghana. Me to my husband is in is Angola. And so you can be pressing me small. small. Listen. The first prayer today is that, Lord, help me to stand firm. Let me stand my grounds. The pressure is too much, but I want to stand my grounds. I want to live a holy life. Daniel and his friends, purpose in their heart, they will stand for God. May God give you grace this morning Amen. that you can purpose in your heart. Amen. To stand for God. Amen. The pressure of America is too much. Mm. The pressure of Europe is too much. Mm. The pressure of the world is too much. Mm. Purpose in your heart. I will stand for God. Mm. I will live for God mm. no matter what happens. Look at the next prayer. The second prayer point. That's right. Ask God to carry you into divine favor. No, jump that one. Let's go to the last one there. And the same, no, the same mm. page 14. Father Lord, that's right. Reveal to me great and deep things hidden about ah. my life. That is Daniel two twenty two. Daniel two verse twenty two. What does he say? Daniel, Daniel two, two verse, verse twenty two. My God. He reveals deep and mysterious things. Look at that. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. The God you and I serve reveals deep things. Mm. There was a young man in Ghana. His mm. name is called a Japon. And a Japan deals with Bola. He, he buys refuse. And with refuse, he makes a lot of money. Yeah. Today, may God open your eyes Amen. in this land in which you are, mm. that you can be able mm. to make wealth. Mm. Look at the last one, the last prayer point for the day, day 14 here. Prayer the last point. prayer point for the day. 14. I love this one. Father Lord, mm. give my enemies miscarrying womb mm. and dry breast. In the book of Hosea, <laughs> chapter 9, verse 14, he said, give them, O Lord, what shall you give them? He said, you shall give them a miscarrying womb and a dry breast. My time is up. I'm not out of words, but I'm out of time. But before then, let me explain this scripture to you. He says that, give them a miscarrying womb. Any issue that happens in life is conceived in a womb. Mm -hmm. It's conceived before it comes up. So if you are praying a prayer and say, God, give them a miscarrying womb, means that whatever they conceive, yes. whatever they conspire, Amen. it will run out. Amen. Whatever they thought will happen to you, it will never happen. God will flash it out of their system. Amen. God will take it out of their system. God will not let it come to pass. And the other part of the prayer is that give them a dry breast means that those things they've already had and they are nourishing let those things be be malnourished may that we give them supply be cut off Jesus. can i pray for you right now i've hit only three points from my prayer book and i have over 20 of them inside the prayer book for you to look at and so we are praying i'm praying for you for the three points i have raised heavenly father i pray for a friend that is hearing me today i i speak over somebody's life and i declare in the name of jesus Amen. that whatever the enemy has conceived in their heart Amen. 
whatever they have trans con, con, sat down to conspire against you, I declare in the name of Jesus that may it be aborted. Amen. May it be aborted Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. By Hosea chapter 9 verse 14, we abort that agenda. We abort that plan. You will not die before your time. You will not die before your season. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare at this moment that God will preserve your life. In the name of Jesus, he said he revealed deep secrets. I speak over your life that God will give you deep ideas, ideas to make it, ideas to impart in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you in the midst of turbulence, God will give you grace to stand firm and to make a stand for him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You, you'll be wishing, you'll be wishing that you want a copy of this prayer book and you want to have one. I'm going to leave some copies with um, Elder Pinto right here in the Holy Hill Studios, Holy Hill Network Studios right here. You can call the line um, 614-617-1434 and you can pick a copy. I've been wondering how much I can sell this information book to you. But I think that it will be best to give it to you as a gift price. I wish I can give it to you for free. And I was telling somebody a price of it. He said, oh, please increase the price. No, it's going for $5. Ooh, that is a free gift. $5. So get $5. You can come for one. Get it for your friends. And it will be a blessing unto them. To read it every morning. Pray with it every time. And it will be a blessing unto everybody that is part of it. So you come right here. Call the line. Tell them. Get them the money. And they can get it for you. 614-617-1434. You can also try this number. If you keep calling and it's not coming through. Try 614-577-1434. Six four. Try these numbers. Call in. Let's get you a copy of the book and you read and your prayer life will be enriched. Michael Noabono, I am out of your way. I'll come another time. God bless you. Anytime we are back in America, we'll make time and meet. Amen. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.